Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Today we're going to talk about how to 3D print jigs and fixture to boost manufacturing efficiency. Just a little bit of background about myself. My name is Juliette Combe. I am an application engineer in the product team at Formlabs. And my role is to conduct research on application for 3D printing in engineering and manufacturing environment. So the agenda for today, I will start with setting some context and discuss how do 3D printed tools boost manufacturing efficiency. And then I will give like a method and guidelines on how to 3D print jigs and fixture with design guidelines and how to choose the right technology. And then we'll go into case studies from users that are using 3D printed tools for different uh, processes. So for testing, for fabrication such as machining, uh, assembly, finishing, inspection as well. So I first want to um, give an intro on how do 3D printed tool boost manufacturing efficiency. So first some context about how is production organized overall. So the first thing to mention is that it takes many steps to bring a product to market. Um, so you usually start with designing the product and then testing it for design, for engineering. Um, and then you go into a fabrication phase where you actually shape the part, either with machining or forming method. Uh, then there is assembly, there is finishing and inspection, obviously, for quality and control. And then the part is being shipped and delivered to customers. This is more or less the general uh, structure of um, how production is organized. So it involves a multiplicity of processes, machines, labor, and they all need to be optimized through manufacturing chains. So this is uh, what modern factories look like. So first, a definition, a manufacturing aid is any tool or device that supports and facilitates manufacturing operation. So it's often just referred as jigs and fixture, actually, in the industry. And they are used uh, by business internally to make manufacturing, assembly, um, and processes simpler and more reliable. So they help. Uh, reducing cycle time, improving worker safety, and overall reducing production costs. So the type of manufacturing aids um, are multiple. You have a work holding device. Those are the most popular jigs, fixture, soft jaws, um, vise, clamp, and so on. Um, there is also locating device, such as alignment pins, um, locators, and, and other um, tools that hate help um, localizing the workpiece. Then there's measuring device with gauge. Um, there's also machinery uh, replacement parts, such as creepers, connectors, um, and also all type of uh, organizer to help organizing the factory floor. So there is really a broad range of tools that you can be using in, in production. And typically, uh, manufacturers machine tooling in metal either in-house or through outsourced vendor, vendors. And most tools are uh, made of multiple part assemblies, which is quite complicated. Um, and machining requires expensive equipment, um, skilled laborers to set up the cam uh, and the machine operation. Um, so and outsourcing to vendors uh, can take weeks and um, is actually very expensive. So producing such tools Customize and just in time can be very challenging. But depending on the force uh, apply on the part, it, it's actually not always necessary to produce this tool in middle, even though historically it's been done that way. So this is the topic of today. Obviously, this is where additive manufacturing enters. Um, so additive manufacturing, also called 3D printing, is a very powerful, powerful solution to 3D print uh, tools rapidly and at low cost in-house because it's a tool-less tool -less fabrication process and it increases uh, design freedom, design complexity, and brings customization possibilities. So I just want to give a like very quick overview of the reason why we would want to print 
manufacturing aid. So as I mentioned, it's fast and cost effective. So it allows to do on demand production of tools and solve day to day production issues. Um, it also gives designers the um, uh, freedom in designing new product, in designing custom tools that match every specific job, uh, and in building complex geometry that are difficult to manufacture with traditional method. And also, it also helps to simplify CAD models and decrease the number of parts for your tool. Third, um, third point is that 3D printing is uh, allowing to replace bulky heavy metal parts with lightweight plastic parts and uh, propose a lot of different materials. So at Formlabs, we have broad of, uh, a broad choice of material from flexible to stiff um, or ESD safe. So it can also be a reason why you would want to choose 3D printing. And finally, 3D printing brings flexibility. So um, it helps to improve operational agility. So reacting to market change or to customer requirement changes um, and encouraging also continuous improvements in, on the factory floor. So those are the main takeaways. Now, a question that comes back often is, uh, can you actually replace metal tool with 3D printed tool. So we have already um, a lot of, we've seen already a lot of companies that leverage the flexibility of 3D printing to replace uh, metal tooling such as dye in sheet metal forming. You can see it on the right. Or um, mold in injection mold or in thermoforming. So this is what we call um, rapid tooling. Uh, this is obviously to do short run production but it's uh, definitely being used right now. So I'm just showing this picture of um, an injection mold, 3D printed injection mold, and um, the 3D printed, printed tool is being used uh, at high pressure, high temperature, and the high constraint. So uh, I'm not going to go into detail in, into rapid tooling and mold and dyes today, but uh, we have more content about that. We have webinars and white paper that you can easily find on our website. So I think this is a great example on how a 3D printed part can handle very demanding uh, and uh, yeah, de very demanding environment. So very quickly, the workflow, if you're familiar with 3D printing already, it starts with designing or 3D scanning for reverse engineering, if you're trying to do replacement parts, for example. And then 3D printing, depending on the technology you're using, post-processing as well, and then deploying, implementing the part on your machine. Guidelines for designing. So we have a lot of guidelines in the white paper. Um, we have a, 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 written, a written report with guideline and um, we'll share that uh, afterwards. Um, you can find much more explanation, but I wanted to highlight the, uh, let's say the most important part of it. So first, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that 3D printing allows for complex shape at no extra cost. So when you're designing a 3D print, uh, um, when you're designing a, a jig to 3D print, um, take advantage of this and, and consider what additional functionality you can build into the jig. So for example, small feature that will be difficult to machine, uh, part with curved or complex shape, uh, those ones are good to, to try to uh, optimize. You can also build in serial numbers, uh, dates, numbers, um, um, yeah, something directly into your CAD model, uh, model, so that helps you to track your part and to organize your inventory, uh, so that's really helpful. Um, you can also build that room feature directly into the tool to, he to help inspection and to um, like have um, more consistent uh, geometrical reference. And uh, also keep in mind that you can try to decrease the number of parts of your jig, so you could actually often reduce your jig in just one part. So this is an example of a jig for a pretty complex uh, part. So that's a drilling jig. Other recommendation for design, increased rigidity. So um, the typical way, you can see on the right, uh, the typical way to increase stiffness of a machine feature is to leave extra material, usually, in locations that are prone to bending and loading. 
Um, in additive, it's a bit different. Uh, we try to minimize material consumption to keep the parts cost low and also increase the speed of the printing process. So it helps to use uh, reinforcing ribs, as you can see on that on the left um, illustration here. So this will uh, help increase rigidity. Also, uh, use a tapped hole in the 3D printing part. Uh, using tap hole is not uh, that effective. You can or, um, directly include that uh, and increase durability of mechanical collection with uh, uh, insert with 3D inserts. Other recommendation, uh, try to make allowance to manage the effect of machine debris. So with milling operation, you can often have small chips of material that accumulate on the jigs or the fixture. So whenever possible in your design, you can already uh, minimize or eliminate small gap, groove and pocket. Um, so that's, you see the difference on the left, it's a typically milled, um, milled part. And on the right, it's um, typical geometry for 3D printing with corners and locators that have eased edge and smooth relief pockets. So um, this one was actually, will actually help um, manage the debris of machining. And it doesn't, it's, doesn't cost you anything to add that in your design. And last recommendation for designing, also consider user experience when you design your tool. So think about uh, how you can um, physically help the operator. For example, consider designing a tool that can be used only with one hand. Um, yeah, so you can always include that directly in your design of your jig when you are uh, preparing it. All right, now I think this is a pretty interesting um, section maybe this is a question that uh, you you ask yourself often so how to choose the right 3d printing technology so usually 3d printed gignet fixture they, they are often fabricated with uh, fdm because it's fast and, and low cost um, but if you are looking for manufacturing aids that require higher resolution better accuracy smoother surface finish um, superior mechanical strength as well, and uh, such as strength or durability, and complex design, um, we will recommend moving to SLA or SLS technology. Thank you for tuning into this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.